In this lesson, we're going to learn about how we can solve these games. I will introduce what is known as the Nash equilibrium. Remember in the last lesson, we presented the prisoner's dilemma game and we represented it in normal form. However, we didn't make any predictions about what action the players will choose. There, of course, were four possible outcomes for the joint actions of the players. In this lesson, we will discuss how the Nash equilibrium predicts what the players will do. So first, I'm going to define the Nash equilibrium in words, and then we're going to define it in math. Immediately following this lesson, we will find the Nash equilibrium of the prisoner's dilemma. So the Nash equilibrium specifies actions for all players or for each player such that no player has an incentive to unilaterally change its action. Okay, we're going to go through and discuss this definition term by term. So what do I mean by specifies actions? Remember a game is made up of players, all of the possible actions they can take, and the utility functions or the payoffs. What a Nash equilibrium does is that it picks an action of the many possible actions for each player. So what do I mean such that I say incentive? We haven't really talked about this yet, um, but in general and from here on out, we are going to assume that players prefer higher payoffs. In the prisoner's dilemma example, we said the payoffs maybe represent the number of years off of a prison sentence. And I would imagine anybody facing prison uh, would want to have as many years cut off of their sentence as possible. So an incentive means or a player has an incentive to deviate or change its action if it can change its action and receive a higher payoff or a higher utility. And what do I mean by unilaterally? Uh, this is key here. So remember, a Nash equilibrium specifies action for each or all players. Okay. So given the action of each player, there is not a player that can only change his action and get a higher utility. In this case, players can only change their own actions intuitively because players cannot force another player to change their action. Okay, so the Nash equilibrium specifies actions for each player such that no player can increase its expected utility by changing its action. When I say by unilaterally changing its action, again, I mean holding the actions of all other players constant. So let's look at this in math terms. For our case, we're just going to define the Nash equilibrium for two players. This could easily be extended to the case of n players. So we're going to be a little bit abstract here, and we're going to say that two players, player one has actions alpha one, alpha two, alpha k. So for example, in the prisoner's dilemma, A1 is just um, cooperate or defect. Player two's actions we'll similarly just call beta one, beta two, beta m. Okay, we're being a little abstract here. So we say that the strategy profile now, a strategy profile gives an action for each player. So we'll say alpha star, beta star, okay, where alpha star is one of these and beta star is one of those, is a Nash equilibrium if player one's utility 
when he plays alpha star and player two plays beta star is greater than or equal to player one's utility when he plays alpha prime i'll discuss that in a second player two still plays beta star and alpha prime is for any other action that he can play okay the same condition can be written for player two it says that player two's utility when player one plays alpha star player two plays beta star must be greater than or equal to player two's utility when player one still plays alpha star player two plays beta prime for all beta prime in a2 so again what does this say this says player one's expected utility so alpha star and beta star is an ash equilibrium if player one's utility when they're both playing this profile when player one is playing alpha star and player two is playing beta star has to be greater than player one's utility holding player two's action at beta star notice this didn't change but his utility playing alpha star and beta star has to be greater than his utility for playing any other action this is the alpha prime that he can possibly play so this represents all the actions he can possibly pay play for any alpha prime in a1 and the exact same condition holds for player two if these conditions hold for both players then we say that alpha star beta star is a nash equilibrium strategy profile again i want to emphasize that this definition can just keep going to represent three four five six seven as many players as you want I just illustrated in this case for two players. Stay with me. In the next lesson, we're going to actually find the Nash equilibrium of the prisoner's dilemma and see this at work.